I snore? Yeah. See, I don't know if I snore because I don't hear myself, so. Oh, he hears himself because sometimes it wakes him up. And he's like, baby, was I snoring? Yeah, you were snoring. <laughs> it usually happens when he's on his back, and then he will just, he gets into that deep snore like the. I mean, it's deep. And then he stops. His chest would stop moving and everything. Like, he just, like, he was not breathing. So I nudged him, like, babe, wake up. And then he'd catch his breath. I'm like, dude, you just stopped breathing in your sleep. And I saved him. Pam's a registered polysomnographic technician. A poly what? Polysomnographic means sleep study. She'll be the one putting the electrodes in. Sleep apnea actually is a pretty common condition, which is most likely underdiagnosed and under-evaluated because many people don't realize that they have it. Well, every time I stop breathing, she, you know, the next morning, yeah, sleep apnea, yeah, sleep apnea. I'm like, what is sleep apnea? Well, sleep apnea is a condition where a person is unable to get air into their lungs when they fall asleep. Every time the person stops breathing, they wake up. They stop breathing, they wake up. And that exposes the body to a myriad of really adverse stresses. And that does have consequences. Irritability, can't focus and maintain attention. They're unable to sleep in the same bedroom with their bed partner or spouse. There's about a sevenfold increased risk of motor vehicle accidents. It's linked with the obesity epidemic to being linked with cardiovascular or heart disease. High rates of stroke, diabetes, and even mortality. And so now, so now we gotta fix it. Don't wanna go out like that. So Shaq, one of the things that uh, we, we talked about. I'm meeting with the sleep doctor, my main man, Dr. C. You know, he said he wanted me to be part of his sleep study. We arranged for an overnight recording in which we could actually find out whether Mr. O'Neill has sleep apnea. So tonight, electrodes on the head, and you know, they're gonna study the brain waves. Hopefully my, my REMs and my non-REMs. See, I read that, <laughs> my rapid eye movements. Oh, and the end is the what? <laughs> non-rapid oh. eye movement, so, you know, hopefully I, I don't have it, but if I do have it, you know, I know I'm working with the best people to, you know, get a cure. You all ready to go to sleep? Yes, sir. Okay, good luck with everything. We'll be here monitoring. So the evaluation of sleep apnea is a test while they're asleep. Then every second of the study will be looked at, and then the physician will interpret it and make a conclusion. To cut to the chase, you have moderate sleep apnea here. Obstructive sleep apnea is a chronic condition which is eminently treatable. All right, so you said there's the mask, the mouthpiece, and surgery. The treatment of choice as of today for sleep apnea is to go ahead with, with nasal sleep apnea the mask. And is this forever treatment or it's just a six week thing? We, we generally regard this as lifelong treatment. Getting a mask to fit effectively is, is often a cardinal part of effective treatment. You have a mask here that I can look at? If a person is able to use the CPAP device, it works almost 100% of the time. Oh yeah, this is, yeah, this is pretty good. This is nice, I like it. Can I wear it to the club? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is nice. Okay, I like good. It. I'll do it. Okay. Since I've met with Dr. C, and you know, I've been getting at least seven, eight, nine hours of sleep a day. I feel good. The weight is good. Got a lot of energy. The relationship is good at the house. Everything is working. <laughs>